Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your February tarot reading. So um, when I was shuffling out this um, spread for you, I see this um, I see this animal. It looks like a leopard. And um, the, the environment it's in is it's a very jungly, um, almost like a rainforest type of a, um, environment. And it's looking around, it's trying to hunt, and I feel like it's hungry. And it's trying to find food, it's trying to, you know, find, it, it was like following some type of an animal. It want, wants to um, go after that animal, but then the animal dashed into the forest, and now the, um, the leopard, I guess, is a little bit lost and confused. So that's what I'm seeing, and it's looking around, and it's trying to, you know, go through the bushes and to figure out, the, the, to follow the scent of the animal. It might have been like a deer or something. And then it looks up, there's this monkey really high up on the tree. Uh, the monkey threw like a coconut at it, at its head. And the monkey was just all like, um, well, I have food here. You don't have to hunt. You can eat whatever, you know, I eat. And the uh, leopard is like, well, I'm a carnivore. I need to eat certain things. You know, my diet is, is different from yours. And then the monkey's like, well, I have other fruits up in the trees. And there's this back and forth, and then the monkey is just like, it's okay, things will be fine, you're not going to starve. If you think about it, you're not going to starve. So don't be so serious. And then that, that whole sentence echoed. It's like, don't be so serious, and it echoed throughout the forest. So I know it was really weird, but that's what I saw here. And um, I feel almost like sometimes when we are so adamantly looking for something or we're so fixated and and possibly even tunnel vision when it comes to our dogged pursuit of something we can a, a lot of the times overlook a solution that is right in front of us we can overlook a person that is right in front of us or we're overlooking important information that's right in front of us so I'm sensing that you're coming into the month of uh, February. You're scrambling. You're scrambling because you feel like time is running out on a situation. You're scrambling because you feel like, you know, you have to get certain things accomplished. You have to get certain things done. There's a deadline. There's a pressure. There's just like, you know, this nagging, possibly that hunger in the pit of your stomach. And you're going about things, I, I, I feel, in a very narrowly focused type of a way. And you can overlook a lot of important things that you might need to consider, okay? And um, the other thing that I'm getting from that imagery as well is um, I feel like there's somebody coaxing you to, you know, change your ways or to get you to notice them or to get you to see that there is a different way of doing things. Okay, and then I'm also sensing like, you know, the, there, there's the monkey and the leopard, but at the same time, it's almost like um, there's somebody who is up on a tree, they have a bird's eye view, they have a higher vantage point, whereas you might be the land animal, and um, you're on survival instincts, and I feel like they're showing you that there is another way, okay? So going into this reading, the spread that I have laid out here, I do feel there is an environment where it's very restrictive. I almost feel like, you know, um, first of all, the whole concept of options are being taken off the table. Okay, so Seven of Cups, options. And... It's almost like, okay, plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever it is for you. One by one, those options are being knocked down. One by one, they're being crossed off the list. So now we're really, really narrowing down to the, the final options. And we're at a point where it is really crunch time. Something needs to be decided. Something needs to be uh, chosen or picked. And I definitely see this, this concept about working in an environment or under very strict guidelines or under in a very confined or in a very institutionalized or even in a very restrictive 
type of an environment. And I, I feel like as an air sign, and especially for you, Geminis, this is not something that you're comfortable doing. This is not something that you're comfortable with. And so what I have here is the Hierophant. Structure, stability. In a way, this is a, an energy that brings order to a very chaotic environment. Okay, so it's about following tradition, following rules, following procedures, doing what has been done before. Okay, for example, if you're a leopard, you're a carnivore, you cannot switch to an herbivore type of a, um, a diet. Okay, but at the same time, I feel like this, this sense of like whatever has been done in the past, we're going to, going to emulate that and we're going to continue it because it's been tried and true in the past so we have to do it now so i feel like some some laws some protocols some procedures um some rules regulations even are being imposed upon you and you're forced to work within very very clearly defined or in a very like strict confines of existing beliefs existing rules ex existing tradition and there's no room for creativity and as a result of that, I feel like it's it's very frustrating. And I feel like it's a situation that is um, hard for you to exist in, okay? And then on top of that, we have a situation here where I have here the Five of Cups. The Five of Cups is usually disappointment, Okay. A situation that we had really high hopes for, we've um, we were emotionally invested in, and we might have gone into it, you know, in a very hopeful, optimistic, um, uh, all eggs in one basket type of a situation. So I feel like the advent of it um, provided a lot of promise. It had a lot of promise, and then for whatever reason, halfway through. It just kind of collapsed. And the way in which it collapses, I feel like whatever three choices that you, you know, that you laid out on the table, those things are being knocked down one by one. And now you're at a very crucial, pivotal point in this environment. For some of you, this is very much work oriented. And we have the lovers where you have two options that are left over for you. And those are the only two options that you could choose. So whatever started out as, you know, very, um, it's like the opportunities or the, 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 um, the choices were limitless. Those choices are fading away. And now you have to make a very clear decision. And I feel almost like you're not really free and unconstrained to make this decision because the decision impacts other people and the decisions are kind of um, mandated from the top down and it is affecting your freedom of movement it is affecting your free will so in a position you are in a position to make a decision but it's heavily affected by others in the the environment okay so i feel like for many of you the constraints of the work the rules the regulations that are imposed upon you uh, there's a right protocol and procedure for doing things and everything. There's just like a lot of red tape, a lot of frustration, a lot of like, let's take this direction. And then somebody tells you, oh, you can't do that because of this. And you're like, OK, let's go this way. And they're like, no, you can't do that either because of this other thing. And then you're like, OK, let's go this way. And you're getting more frustrated. A little bit more frustrated every single time they come in and they intercept you. And that is why I feel like some of these choices that you came in very hopeful and you came in very starry-eyed, they're being kind of knocked down one by one. And so in order to kind of, um, in order to mitigate the impact of this, okay, here is your advice, and I want to talk about this before anything because I feel like you, you want to understand, like it, it feels to me to be very frustrating and you're trying to figure out how do I get around this because you guys are very good at problem solving and you're also very good at, at you know, coming up with a persuasive argument in order to get around situations. 
What I have here is the Queen of Cups. This is an emotional appeal, okay? This is speaking from the heart. This is not about, you know, those practical decisions. This is, you know, giving yourself the opportunity to be a little bit more lighthearted, to appeal from the heart, and to appeal for situations where you feel like it would be beneficial for everybody. So it's an emotional appeal. There isn't a logical explanation for why this would work in this type of an environment. I'm not seeing anything that would indicate to me why would an emotional response or an emotional appeal, why would that work in this environment? But what it boils down to is we have to be able to emotionally appeal to people's senses in order for us to get to do what we want. And then there's an element here, Ten of Cups. Appeasing one person will allow the energy of this water, this life, these really transformative changes to kind of trickle down and, you know, change the hearts and minds of everybody that's involved, okay? So we, what I feel is happening here is you're confronted with a situation where you feel like, okay, logically it makes sense, but emotionally it doesn't feel right. Or, you know, somebody's telling you to do something that has been tried and true and, you know, um, but like emotionally it's, it's for you, it doesn't feel like it's the best optimal outcome. And so from your end, I would urge you to, you know, really think about how to appeal to somebody's sense of, um, it's, it's almost like um, appealing to their self-interest or, you know, um, it seems almost like inflate, inflating, like um, painting a picture, you know, like um, telling them, this is what it's going to look like, really hyping something up, getting people excited for something. And then through the sheer excitement, it's going to snowball. And then before you know it, half of the work is done. Okay, because like riling people up or getting people to engage or getting people to see all the possibilities that are out there. That's what's really going to be able to help your situation. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So aside from that, let me get some water. Excuse me. So aside from that, I feel like some of you are confronting a, um, a big decision. And it's, it's almost like you feel there are only two ways to go about it. And I feel like it doesn't have to be. There is a third choice. There is a creative choice. There is a choice that's not on the table. And I feel like somebody is hiding this choice from you. Okay, because like, once again, this voice of reason, it's almost like something that can be resolved without reverting to logic, but rather reverting to intuition. And I feel like, you know, when I mentioned before, you're like, okay, let's do this. Somebody comes and intercepts. And they tell you, no, we can't do that. And you're, you automatically go to another option rather than confronting them and asking them, why can't we do that? So I feel like somebody is kind of purposely um, blocking you or they are sidetracking you. So rather than, you know, telling them, well, why can't we? And then learning and exploring more about why it's not possible you automatically default to, okay, plan B, let's do this, and then they come and intercept you again. And so they're strategically knocking off those uh, options for you. And you just kind of accept it as, as that's just the way it is. You know, they're the voice of reason. I rely on them. And they're telling me that's not possible. I'm going to take their word for it. But you're not really asking the right questions to explain why we can't do something so that we, you know, if there's a problem, there's a solution. So 
if there's a reason why you can't do something, you have to explore why it that is, and then you have to you know problem solve to get around it. Okay. Um, so I feel like that's what's happening here. Okay, so let's just um, kind of shift away from that energy. Um, what I have here is, you know, more love relationships type of a focus, the um, bottom row. And um, first of all, there's somebody in your environment and um, there's a mirroring type of energy. So I'm seeing like a partner that could potentially be another air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. And then I'm seeing as well, um, very strong water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. But I see a mirroring type of energy too. So I don't know if it's you or I don't know if it's them, but I feel it might be them. Or from your perception, it's like the, the way this person is. And this is somebody you're either romantically involved with or you are... They're, they're like heavily on your mind, okay? Whoever shows up, it's a person that's significant to you in your love sector. Um, what I'm feeling is um, you feel like this person has it all. And the way that I'm looking at this, it's almost like life hands them opportunities. Everything comes to them on a silver platter. So that's your perception. And I also feel like they've never had to hustle. They've never had to um, really, you know, they, they've never struggled to find a job. They were probably very, um, they, they came from a really prosperous or a very rich household. And, you know, they had the education, they had the connections, they had the, they're also very intelligent. So it, it's almost like someone who's very privileged. So that's your perception of them. I don't feel like it's true. But that is your perception of this person. And you feel like this person, they don't have sustaining power. Um, and, and, you know, they're very talented. They show up as the magician. The magician is somebody that is, you know, has mastery over many, many things. And this is a person that is very well-rounded. They have a lot of talents. Um, they're very sociable. They're very popular. And then you feel like whenever, you know something happens that they don't like, they don't stay around to try to fix it, they move on to the next thing. So for example, if they're like, okay, I'm bored with this job, what's next? They bounce to the next thing. I'm bored with the city, what's next? They bounce to the next city. I'm bored with, you know, my family, they bounce. And so you don't feel like they're very stable or very reliable. And you feel like they're very frivolous when it comes to, you know, it, it's almost like they, if um, someone comes up, uh, grows up in a very privileged environment, they're very frivolous with their money. That, that's what it feels like to you. And I feel almost like there might be a situation that you're, you're wrong about when it comes to analyzing and assessing this person. Okay, because I feel like, once again, the mirroring energy, the things that we think about ourselves are the, the things that we kind of project onto other people. Or they might, you know, have, leave their li lead their life a certain way, and as a result, we jump to conclusions about somebody. We jump to conclusions before we know the whole story. Everyone has their own struggles, and I feel like this is a person that wants what they're looking for and what they're going around, bouncing around, trying to find ultimately is, this is what I'm sensing. You feel they're like this, very frivolous. Eight of Cups, when the going gets rough, they move on. Seven of Cups, they burn all their options. But what you fail to notice is they're actually very, very stable and they're very, very reliable. But what they're really looking for is that full emotional happiness, Ten of Cups. They're going from place to place to find that total completion. It's not because they're frivolous. It's not because they don't have the sustaining power. It's because they know what they're looking for and they don't want to settle for things that are... They don't want to settle. And so there's a major epiphany I feel happening for the first two weeks of um, 
February where you're going to have to ask, you're going to have to do a little bit more creative problem solving. You're going to have to really dig in and try to uh, unearth or uncover a situation where somebody is like sidetracking you. They're there. It's like a red herring. It's a distraction and they're giving you information and you don't question it. You have to start questioning things. You have to start asking those um, important questions. You have to ferret out your answers and you have to really, you know, um, I guess like be more critical about other people's motives. And especially if somebody is keeps telling you, no, we can't do that because you have to really figure out why are they doing that? And I feel like somebody is trying to lead you a certain way or they're trying to have you believe that there are only two options when in fact there are plenty of options available to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one last thing, Gemini's. Um, I don't know if some of you have been like, um, I'm, I'm seeing smoking and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Whatever you do in your free time, that's, that's good. But I, I do get very like bad short shortness of breath when I am reading for you. And I feel like, um, you're putting things in your body that might not be good for you. And you want to, I, I feel like some of you could be, you know, like, for example, if you have like a throat infection or a, an irritation, and rather than giving your throat a rest, you're like smoking a lot, that can aggravate it. You want to be careful, okay? I, I feel a lot of like head flus, um, swollen lymph nodes around the throat area. And then I also feel like, you know, you need to just take better care of yourself, Okay. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. I feel like there is a, 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 a solution or something that you haven't explored yet. And I feel almost like you haven't explored it because it's outside the realm of possibility. And it's time for you to really sit down and, you know, really revisit all the options that you had before and try to figure out why did somebody tell me this wasn't going to work Okay. Um, aside from that, if you are dealing with a water sign, a Pisces, Cancer, or a Scorpio, um, I feel like there is a situation here where, you know, there, um, I'm, I'm sensing, I'm sensing that it, the relationship needs a little bit of maintenance the relationship feels to me like it's neglected and it needs a lot more maintenance in order for it to you know stand the test of time i'm also seeing a situation here earth sign taurus virgo or capricorn and i also feel like they feel a little bit neglected in the relationship they feel neglected and they might be on their way out because they feel neglected okay they feel like they're it, it's not really um, the relationship is not giving, it's not feeding their emotional needs. Okay. So they might be on their way out. And then I feel like from your end for singles, I feel like uh, a series of like three failed relationships and they're saying like fourth time is a charm. Fourth time is a charm, but I, I just don't feel like, you know, the, the energy is too heavily focused on love in general, the first two weeks of the month. Okay. Um, I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. Um, best of luck with everything. Take care. Oh, and one last thing. Um, for those of you who are still emailing me, um, I am no longer doing private readings, but if you are interested in booking a reading for yourself, I do have a colleague that I highly recommend. Her name is Bridget and she is a psychic. She's very, very talented. I put her um, scheduling uh, link, the link to her scheduling webpage, in the description box um, below the video, if you want to book a reading, just check out the link, okay? Um, I'll see you guys maybe in about two weeks, okay? Take care.